Today we're going to talk about creating house flipping partnerships and those agreements that are needed to make it successful. Okay guys, if you have a question just like this one, please type it in the comments below and I'll create a video for you just like I'm doing now. So house flipping partnerships let's talk about this these can be limited to one transaction or they could be for several transactions so lots of times when you're getting started in real estate you need some help and sometimes that help comes in form of finding a partner this partner could be putting up money this partner could be putting up time this partner could be putting up effort and work just like you are and the type of partnership you're going to be doing really is needs to be determined by what they're going to be offering are they offering time are they offering money are they offering expertise what does that look like the next question you've got to ask yourself is is this a long-term or a short-term partnership? Meaning, are we gonna do one deal together or do we plan on being to in business together for a very, very long time? Those are some questions you've gotta ask yourself and how you create this agreement is gonna depend on that. So for example, let's say you're planning on having a long-term house flipping and you're both coming into it with the same amount of money, you're both gonna be putting in the same amount of effort and the number of hours on a weekly basis, and so you decide we're gonna start a limited liability company, and with that we will both take ownership of it, and maybe we'll have 50-50 split on something like that, which means we're both responsible for 50% of the losses and we're both responsible 50% for the profit. Now, this is probably the most uncommon. What is more common is you may have a deal that you'd like to do, you have found the deal, but you are short on some cash. So maybe the hard money lender can give you 100,000, but you need 120,000. Now there's lots of other ways to come up with cash on these types of deals. We have 17 ways to get 100% financing. I'll link that video in the comments. Um, but let's just say one of those ways is you're gonna use a business partner. And so you can go to this business partner and you can say, hey, on this transaction, I would be willing to give you this percentage of profit. And based upon that percentage of profit, this is how much you would be estimated to make. And so that's just a partnership agreement for that one transaction where you're making an agreement just for that one. So when we talk about these home house flipping partnership agreements, it really, really comes down to is it a long-term or short-term agreement? If it's a long-term agreement, you're gonna to wanna to be using an LLC and put something together with long-term with articles, um, or you're gonna to wanna to use a deal-by-deal deal agreement, which spells out how that relationship is. I think it's best for you as a real estate investor to try and work on a deal by deal basis rather than working on a long term basis. I've seen a lot of horror stories and issues specifically where two people go into business, they both think everybody's going to work super hard and it ends up one person works a lot more than the other person, that person gets frustrated, they end up upset and it doesn't go well. So it's so much better if you work on a deal by deal basis and come up with an agreement on a deal by deal. Now that could mean we're both going to work together to find the property, but we're only going to split profits on this one specific transaction. Or it could be somebody's putting up time and somebody's putting up money, or it could be they're just putting up the money on the transaction. That's what you need to look at. Now, how do you actually form that? Well, what's used quite frequently is a joint venture agreement. A joint venture agreement says, I'm going to do these things, you're going to do those things, and in the end, this is what we're going to split. As you're making this, it's really important to document specifics of what your plans are. What are you bringing to the table? What are they bringing to the table? What is expected? I may be responsible for finding a property, but they may be responsible for paying for the marketing, for instance. Um, I have a uh, joint venture agreement where my job is to pay for the marketing and my job is to fund the transaction. And uh, they're responsible for taking the phone calls, going on the appointments, um, they're responsible for putting them under contract, they're responsible for reselling the, the property, and those things we've documented so that we're on the same page with that, so everybody knows what's gonna be happening, and that, can, that actually goes marketing campaign by marketing campaign is how we determine the length of that specific relationship. That's important to write those things up. Now, it's, it's also note needs to be said that I'm not an attorney, um, so I'm just giving you some general things, but one of the things that I find is it's best if you guys 
write down everything and think as if you had to go in front of a judge and explain who was responsible for what. You'd be pretty detailed about that. Well, I like to document all of that and then I like to hand that document to an attorney and let the attorney actually put an agreement together um, that all parties can sign. That's the easiest thing to do. It'll save you a bunch on attorney fees, but if you, you walk through things, I spend a lot of money on attorneys. Um, we have an on-staff attorney. We have attorneys in every state where we do business. So we spend a lot of money on, on attorneys and I've spent a lot of time in my life with attorneys. Um, that said, typically in these types of uh, uh, partnership agreements, what attorneys are typically doing is spending time clarifying who's gonna be responsible for this, who's gonna be responsible for that. So you can save yourself a grundle of money in working with attorneys if you simply sit down and think through everything. And the best way to think through this is, what if everything went wrong? What if it went wrong? What would happen here? And how would we wanna be on the same page? The next question you've gotta ask yourself is, what if everything went right? What if we made more money than we were thinking? And if you think through that and you put a document together that says, I'm responsible for this, you're responsible for this, then this is how I'm compensated, and this is how you're compensated, and this is what it looks on a deal by deal basis. Write all that, review it, send it to your partner. You review it, have your wife review it, send it back to your partner, make sure you're all on the same page. And at that point, you send it over to the attorney and say, this is our proposed agreement. Now, if you can make sure we get that solidified properly into an agreement, um, that's a great way to go, save you some time and money, and also to solidify that and make sure it's something they can hold up if there ever was a conflict. Um, I'll also tell you, it seems like um, agreements like these are only as good as the person that signs them. Meaning if you're working with somebody that doesn't have integrity, even if they sign the most binding contract in the world, if they have no integrity, they're probably not gonna end up paying you. They're probably not gonna end up following through. Who knows, they're gonna move to another state. You'll probably never see them again or hear from them again. So it's really important that you're working with somebody you feel has integrity. It's not always, you can't know that up front. Um, it just by the first time you meet somebody, but it's important that you're very cautious about that and realize that you are taking risk when you're working with somebody else because um, you have no idea how they're gonna handle. Everybody's great until there's a problem, and when there's a problem, you never know how people are gonna react. So you wanna be really careful with that. So best thing, type up everything, get on the same page, send it to everybody, and then get an attorney involved in that specific situation. If you've enjoyed this video, it's been helpful for you, please hit that thumbs up button and also consider subscribing. subscribing. Um, I'm gonna send you my text number so you can get a copy of my book, How to Get More Money Than You Can Ever Handle, A Real Estate Investor's Guide to Funding Deals. Now, this book sells on Amazon and Barnes and Noble, but I'll send you a free e-copy of that if you just text me your email address to 435 2940433. I also have a blog post. I'm going to link it in the comments below. The guide to real estate investing for beginners, as well as a video on how to structure partner deals, which is exactly what we're uh, getting into on today's video. I'll know that you'll enjoy it. Otherwise, make it a very profitable day and bye for now.